and we are live. I am so excited to spend yet one more beautiful, amazing Monday with you. And I am so excited that you are here again with me. Welcome to your Monday. Welcome to a most amazing Monday. My name is Monica Henderson, and I am your tour guide on this fabulous day, the founder and creator of Mink Life Motivation. And I am so excited to share with you what we have in store for you on this show. So with that, I think we should get this party started. I got some lovely ladies hanging out in the wings for you, and we are just going to hang out, shall we? Let's get it started. Sharing my screen. Okie dokie. And here we go again. This is how you know it's a live show. Let's get it started. So again, this is Mink Life Motivation. And what do we do here? We are a personal business brand and network development company. And our job every single week when we come on this show is to help you get motivated, stay inspired, keep networking and gain knowledge so that you can live a life that's designed by you, for you, healthier, wealthier, and more fulfilled. I am so excited to be here with you this week. And I wanna share with you what's happening. We are really going to dive into that funnel of yours, and we're going to figure out how brand materials are essential to marketing your brand. We're going to, it's time to build your brand. And with that, I want to get you motivated by introducing to you my motivators of the week. The first is Marcia McCray, and she is the founder, uh oh, out of order, there we go. She <laughs> is the, the principal at, at the Brand Naked Agency, author of the Busy Entrepreneur Guides um, series, and also a Mink Life Motivation Trainer, specifically in the Brand Builder. Uh, we have Andre Gwertz, who is uh, a health and wellness strategy, uh, the well-being and worth, and um, strategist and founder of Wellbeing and Worth, and also the Mink Life Motivator Master Trainer. And last but not least, our special guest is Carmel Murphy, and she is the director at The Communication Queen and dynamic speaker from the next global virtual conference. These are my girls. We're hanging out. And let's let's say hello, ladies. We're hey, Carmel. everybody. We're Carmel. Oh, there she is. I'm here. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hey! Yeah. So weird. My screen's so weird. <laughs> oh, look, Sorry. I lost her. Yeah. Hi, how are y'all doing this week? Happy good. Monday. Good. Good. Really good. good. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> so I just wanted to point out very specifically that Carmel is coming at a very early, early, early part mm. of the future. Uh, she's in Perth, Australia, and so she has. Uh, got up early to kind of hang out with us girls so hopefully it's going to be uh the the happiest hour of your day hanging out with us <laughs> absolutely at least a good We're start to her day <laughs> happy yeah. hour early in the morning right we're getting yeah. popping yeah. right now uh and so as we always start with the getting of the motivated uh we start with the question why is understanding your client's contact points important when choosing your brand materials now we have a couple of branding experts on, so I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Carmel, our guest, go first. Why is what is this contact point of it all, and why is it important that those brand materials are so important and pivotal to that point? Well, I guess the actual point is consistency. You need to be showing up as your brand consistently, so people start to recognize you. They start to really go, oh, that's Carmel. And it's colors, it's how you show up, it's how you talk. And it's also your marketing message. It's been really clear. So my marketing message, for example, is right message, right person, right time. So I'm showing up talking about that in some way, shape or form all the time. So it's really important from a marketing perspective to know where your clients are showing up. So whether that's on Facebook, whether it's in LinkedIn, wherever it is, so that you can show up in front of them too. 
Absolutely. Marcia, what, what are your thoughts? Well, I think the contact points are imperative because they determine, determine what materials are needed for your client to achieve his or her goals in their business. So, I mean, it's, it's really important to have that, that kind of, you know, thing going, knowing That's exactly great. what they need. Yes. It drives them, you know, it's, it's driving people because people don't know you. So they need to have your clients, you know, your client, you need to understand what your client needs for their specific business. Andrea, what exactly. Andrea, you're muted. Muted. Oops, that'd be nice to unmute myself. I'm just like, hello. And I'm like, the blazing sign from Zoom. You were muted. Unmute yourself. Um, speaking of unmuting yourself, it's kind of the same thing. It, it really is. If you know, if you can speak into their consciousness with your brand materials, then you are subliminally actually accessing them in a way that they go, there's the answer because you've, uh, you've presented the answer as part of your brand materials. Your brand materials are the answer and they're like, yep. that's it. And therefore, you know, you close the deal and make the sale. Yep. There you go. Yeah. All of, all of you guys are like dead on, like spot on with that. Right. It's like, uh, so in Mink Life Motivation, we talk about the contact points, right. In this, in this brand material conversations very specifically because how many of us have been, have gotten a random magnet that means nothing about the company? <laughs> it has nothing to do with what they do, right? Yeah. Or, you know, and there's so many um, there's so many entrepreneurs and business owners who are like, oh, I need a catchy gimmick uh, that'll really help me sell my brand. But the reality is, if uh, the if your if it's not in alignment with how people are touching your brand, then it actually is inauthentic to who you are in your mm -hmm. brand really want people to be kind of pressing forward in a, an authentic way. But not only that, it's a waste of money. I mean, how many yeah, boxes it is true. Tchotchkes, right? The the yeah. random tchotchkes that are standing, sitting in the corner with your, with your logo slapped on it because some logo person said, oh, it'd be a great idea to put yep. your logo on everything. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, yeah, absolutely. Right. I needed 20,000 uh, stress reliever balls that I'm never going to sell. Right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, really cool. yeah, for sure. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, you know, I've gotten some really cool swag from companies that, and I was like, this is cool swag, but I still won't call you. Right. And so it's super important that the brand materials actually match <laughs> what I still won't call you. Them. <laughs> Am I right? I mean, no, yeah. it's true. You're right. You're right. Yeah. yeah. You're very right. Mm -hmm. You're very loud <laughs> about how right you are. <laughs> I'm like, mm, true story. So as we're thinking about like the contact points, what are, you know, and I'm going off, off script here, so forgive me, but what are some, what are some areas in which uh, people should be considering as a contact point for their brand material? Um, okay, so as a, you mean like a, a lead magnet for want of a better word, so sort of like that. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So um, again, just going on, for example, my one, when it's right message, right time. So one of the big things is people don't know who they're talking to. So my lead magnet is about how to uncover the lucrative target market, your specific lucrative target market. So it goes with my brand. It's still mm -hmm. under that right message, mm -hmm. right person, right time. So I think there's a lot of people, you're so right, you know, how many stress balls do you need with your you still won't call them, but you'll use the stress ball. It has to be really, yeah, applicable to what it is that um, you're doing. Otherwise, there is a mismatch. And while they might use your free PDF or video or whatever it is, they might use it and go, but they won't remember you. And it's important that they start, you build that no like, and trustability. So they start seeing you as the go-to person for that particular thing. Yeah, I agree with that a hundred percent. Did anybody else want to chime in on? Yeah, actually, it just like depends on what the person is doing. Like for mm -hmm. instance, one of my clients, they were they're an artist and they need a catalog for their to showcase their artwork, and also website your website. That's mm -hmm. like one of the main things that people look at. You know, because they want to know more about who you are. So, you know, what you do and how you can help them. So, yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh, Andrew, did you have anything you wanted to contribute to that? I know you deal with uh, funnels of sorts as well. In yeah, I mean, both 
women, Carmel and Marcia have really touched on, what do you leave for that lasting impression? And because we're virtual all the time, it really does need to be something that people want to access again and again so mm-hmm. that you can have that connection. Um, you know, the stress balls, it's funny you would bring that up in this time of COVID. I guess people would reach for them. No, but I was so. thinking about pens and I, you know, I, I tell my children, never buy another pen. Your mother has tons of pens from around her networking <laughs> life. And so it's been kind of amusing to like reach for a pen and see who's advertising. I'm like, oh, I haven't talked to them in a while. And actually it's been a memory jogger. So here's a, a deflected kind of time to slow down the pen actually useful because I've been trying to go through all of them and not waste them <laughs> has been a nice memory jogger of sorts. Like it's been interesting. I'm like, I don't remember this one, but this is what's is weird or whatever it is. So I definitely think that having a meaningful one to your point, Carmel, or, you know, does your brand show up and invite people in from your website? Yeah. These are all things that as we move from IRL to non-IRL, I don't know what we're going <laughs> to call it. I, I what, What's the acronym for not virtual VRL virtual real life like is that what we are in right now I think and so as my kids are like IRL IRL and I'm like (laughs) I feel like I'm in a VRL like (laughs) but it's so important now it's even got me thinking about all of those touch points yeah how people show up especially online now me who used to be such an in-person networker so both of these women are sending chills down the spot. <laughs> as I as I search my soul for twenty twenty one and my VRL. Sorry, <laughs> you're caught me in a very pensive last quarter of the year reassessment moment. So, but yeah, they're both spot on, and I feel like you're talking to me. <laughs> but that's that's the crazy part, right? Is like uh, we're all we all had shift this year, like a coronavirus, even if you had your like, your brand materials down, like to like, it's down, it's solid. You still had to do some shifting because how you were interacting with people before, and there were quite a few people who were already virtual anyway, but, uh, and so they were ahead of the game from the rest of us. But even in some of those ways of like business cards and like, how do you get people to go to your thing? And how do I stand out in, in, in the chat room? And how do I, you know, like there's all these other new kind of ways uh, that we have to rethink our, our mm-hmm. contact points, I guess. Um, and how are people like before I would actually go to a networking event and I had a little trick, right? So I was not a business card person. I would actually, I would actually say, well, you like me and I like you and we're friends now, right? And they're like, yeah. And I was like, oh, well then I don't need your business card. Just put your information in my phone, right? And it was a way for me to, and then I'll text you and I would text text them a calendar link and we would go from there. And it was like my gimmick. And now my gimmick is gone, right? Like now everybody's texting. <laughs> and everybody, you, know, you know, so like even if you had like a really slick way of being able to get people's mm-hmm. contact information or be able to like connect with people in your own way, we all had to rethink about it. Uh, and so yes. it's just been really kind of interesting, but I'm happy that we have these two geniuses right here uh, mm-hmm. about, you know, this branding and the brand strategy on to kind of help us understand a little bit more. But as I talk about geniuses, we all kind of had like a journey in order to get to this place. And one of my favorite parts about doing this is really kind of learning about each entrepreneur who comes on the show, their actual like journey to entrepreneurship and like how they came into their own. And this section we always call Stay Inspired. And today, Carmel is going to share her journey. Uh, Carmel Murphy is, of course, the director at the Queen of... the communication queen. Uh, she is also a brand messaging strategist and a gardener and a beekeeper. Uh, yeah, I always throw in fun facts to throw people off. Uh, so she'll have to share with us about that a little bit later. But Carmel, please, please, please share with us your journey to being an entrepreneur. Oh gosh, okay. Thank you so, so much. And I'm so delighted to be here and uh, humbled to be um, on your call. So my journey is in case you can't tell, I'm Irish. So I have a bit of an accent. Um, So I've lived in Australia now for 32 years, which was, um, yeah, quite quite a journey to get here in itself. 
Um, but I suppose we talk about defining moments quite often in our uh, journey, our entrepreneurial journey. And I've had a couple of them. And, you know, one of them was changing from the working person into full-time business. Now, I tried to do that a few times, you know. I went into that revolving door of, yes, I'll change. Oh, no, I need more money. Yes, I'll change. Oh, no, I need more money. Um, but what changed for me, and I suppose the story that makes the most difference, and look, I do talk about this a little bit, but I don't talk about it hugely, and I think um, it's important, and thank you so much for this environment to do it, to realise we look at, you know, whether it's Facebook or LinkedIn or wherever we're looking our audience at, that, that is a highlight reel, and we don't, we compare ourselves to other people, and we don't often realise that hang on, they've gone through stuff too. They've gone through something to get them to where they are. For me, um, my background is hospitality. I love working with people. So I decided to become a coach, yay. Because I was gonna, you know, got qualified and gonna earn lots of money, right? Once people knew, <laughs> um, however, that wasn't the case. So that working environment highlighted in a, you know, kind of, oh my God, I need to change. I've got all these phone calls coming in recruitment and it really scared the life out of me. But I still couldn't make it work. And I still, I had a lot of shame, I guess, and guilt. I was a mentor for other coaches and facilitator, but I had a lot of shame and guilt to admit that I was working full time while I was doing this side gig. But there was a point in my time about five years ago in particular, and I was a regional manager slash business coach for a restaurant chain, which involved me traveling quite a lot. So I looked after three states in um, Australia. So one was Western Australia, South Australia and the Northern Territory. Um, I had a sister that lives here in Perth with me in Perth in Australia, and we were very close. And I knew she had been a bit ill. She had just actually had a heart operation. But, you know, her breathing wasn't 100% um, after it. So she was going back getting her checkups. And I, this is the moment I always remember, is being in Adelaide in South Australia. So maybe four, three and a half to four hours flight away. And my sister ringing me to tell me the results of the test that she had just had. And the results were that she had stage four lung cancer. And to this day, I remember that feeling still goes through me, even when I mentioned that. And it was um, in me, in that moment, because it was stage four, it was, she was given 12 to 18 months to live, that I will not be in another state when somebody rings me to tell me that my sister has passed away. I just literally, it hit me like a, a lightning bolt. My sister and I, as I say, were very, very close. So something got to give, I guess, in hindsight, I don't remember making the decision then that I was going to escalate my side gig into the bigger business. Um, but I do remember saying I will not be in another state when somebody rings me to say she's dead. So I, um, I resigned shortly after it and um, obviously left the job and took on some casual work and bits and bobs and decided then, well, I need to make this side gig work even more um, because, you know, she's, she's still tracking along and she did for 15 months. She went through a lot of treatment. She had a lot of um, different things happen. So she had a lot of setbacks within that. But for those 15 months, I was there. I was there at treatments. I was there anytime she needed me. I was a bit of the, the joke bringer in that environment, for want of a better word. Um, and for that, I have zero regrets, zero. Um, we were, it's never a thing that's on your bucket list to actually sit with somebody and watch them pass. But it's one of the most humbling and beautiful experiences ever. So I have no regrets whatsoever. But in that time, something shifted in me. Here was this beautiful darling sister, um, 58 years of age, who was worked hard all her life, had, you know, all her boxes ticked. She had her, you know, insurances ready that once they retired, you know, she was ready to do all the things she'd always wanted to do. 
and it really it really hit me into what the hell am I doing? I am now the age my sister was because my sister was five years older than me when she was diagnosed. And it was like, what the hell am I doing that I'm going to get to that age and it could all be snuffed out? It could just all be gone in a second. And it really propelled me in a, I'm not going to play small anymore. I'm just not. Why am I hiding and, you know, afraid somebody might think I'm, you know, too bossy or I'm saying the right thing or I'm saying the wrong thing or, you know, I'm too much, <clears throat> excuse me, on social media, I'm too much out there. And I thought, you know what, and Marianne Williamson's quote always comes to mind and I'm paraphrasing here was like, who are you not to shine? Who are you not to shine to allow other people to shine? And it really propelled me to go, well, OK, what do I want to do? in terms of the difference I want to make. What do I want people to say about me when I pass away? Um, do I have a lot of, I, I like to phrase it as in, I don't want to die with my song still in me. It was like I felt I had so much more left to give and it was really pivotal in that time with my sister that I went, I'm not playing small anymore. It's just not going to happen. So since then, I kind of went, well, what? What can I do? What's, what's different? Um, within six weeks of my darling sister passing away, my dad passed away in Ireland, which kind of put for a little family that hadn't had any huge impacts of grief, other than, you know, grandparents passing away many years ago. It really hammered that feeling right into me. Um, my dad actually died, I'm convinced, of a broken heart to have one of his five daughters pass away and he was helpless to do anything about it, really hit him hard. So that kind of put another, um, I don't know, cracker up my backside, if you like, it was like, what, what, what's this about? Like, none of us are going to win a big prize at the end of this. There's none of us getting out of here alive. So I really went back to a mentor that I had um, experience of years ago and had a chat with him and started to really dil diligently say, okay, th this is what I'm gonna do. Things are gonna change. And started to fail forward big time. Like, I mean, if you can fall flat in your face and get back up 10 times, that was me. But I lost the fear of getting it wrong within all of this. I, th I thought it doesn't matter. I can't get past it until I do it. So I just kept doing and doing and doing. Last year, I went back to Ireland, which had been a, lo a long dream of mine. I went back to Ireland and I ran a four day event. I also did the bucket list items of going to Greece and uh, going to Italy while I was there. So I was able to, having built my business enough that I was able to take my laptop and go and spend four weeks in Ireland, go to Greece, go to Italy, and all the time still running my business. The one big thing I found from the coaching days and when the transition happened, when I decided I needed to go, was that, hang on, if nobody knows who I am, if I can't reach them, then how can I possibly help them? And that's how I ended up doing marketing and you know, really getting that right message to the right person at the right time. My background was hospitality, remember. I was talking about team building and leadership in, in my initial coaching. But the big thing was that it didn't matter how much of a team builder I was or how good a leader I was if nobody knew who I was. So then I started going, well, hang on, I have to make a bit more noise so people know who I am. And then people started coming to me and went, well, hang on, how, how are you getting better at business? How are more people seeing you? How are you doing that? And that's how then we kind of have brought it all together to where it is now, where we even have a membership where we say, come ask any question you need to around marketing or business. And people tap into that because it doesn't matter how good you are at anything you do if nobody can see you. So that's kind of where, where I'm at now. Um, and the reason, I uh, thank you so much for the platform to tell that story. And the reason that it is so profound to me now is, number one, I think it's a really 
amazing journey to bring other people on. But number two, like, don't wait till something like that happens in your life for you to realize, hang on a minute, I need to do something. You know, do it now, do whatever it is. Trust me, especially in these virtual times and social media times, people are waiting and go, oh my God, Carmen hasn't been on a live today. Oh my God, where are you? And oh, she said this. They forget about it pretty quick because people's number one top favorite topic of all is themselves. So don't be afraid to stuff it up. Don't be afraid to get it wrong. Don't be afraid to get it right. Um, and just keep going and making sure that you're in a, you get somebody like I have with my mentor, somebody that has what you already want in a way that you can um, follow them and really somebody that you trust so that they can help you grow and get into an environment that supports and help you too. So thank you for this space, Monica. Um, so what I'd like to do, sorry, sorry, what I, I just saw a comment. You can tell this is live, guys, so apologies. What I'd like to do is one of the things that I find with people, as I said, they don't know who you are. So it's identifying who you're talking to. So your lucrative target market and really looking at what I like to call, um, in Australia, I call it the Panadol problem, but in uh, the States, the Tylenol problem. So an urgent problem they have. So one of the main things is knowing exactly who it is you're talking to. So I have a free webinar and I'll put the link in the comments, guys, so you can have it. It's about how to uncover your specific lucrative target market. And the first part of that is knowing who you're talking to. It's a free webinar, hop on and have a look at that and see if it really helps you unpack who it is you're talking to in a way that you can start making sure that you're showing up where they are and that they can start connecting with you. Thank you, Monica. No problem. I um, I'm glad I was off camera because I was over here bawling. My little <laughs> tissues off to the side. I am. I, first of all, I just want to thank you so much for being so transparent and open. Um, a lot of the times, we, you're right. We do think, oh well, they they're achieving it because they've not had to deal with anything, but most people were pushed into this greatness by pain. And yeah. you took that pain and re re turned it into a vision and really kind of pushed it to the next level. And so I just wanna applaud you for that. I have on a cellular level, my, my entire being uh, is excited to be a part of just hearing that story and, and sharing it to the world. Uh, and so thank you so much, uh, Marcia and Andre, if you guys have anything you want to share about what you heard, uh, oh, right? My gosh, <laughs> that's all I have to say. Oh my gosh. Um, I thought that was powerful. I started getting like hairs started just like rising on me. <laughs> like it's so powerful. And then what you said, you said quite a few things. So I wrote them down. Um, you decided to stop hiding. You know, and, and that, that, that what happened to you about your sister is what made you reassess, stop the hiding, you know, and then you yeah. paraphrase, who are you not to shine? You know, Marianne Williams that you paraphrase, mm. you know, and I just, that's something that I suffered with and until this year. And that's why I so like relate to what you're saying. And it, it just, that I mean oh god I'm just like I don't know I because I kind of was like I want to cry you know from the story mm -hmm. from that yeah. that that pain came something really amazing the world gets to hear who you are and gets to hear the gifts and talents that you have and I just think I, to me that it's it goes back to what what my my whole um my my top, my, what do you call it? Tagline is it's stand up, stand out and take your place in the world. And Carmel Murphy, you surely did that mm -hmm. in the midst of all of that pain. And I thank God that you have done that, that you shared it. You didn't let that pain stop you, but you kept it going and you shared your gift with people that really need to hear. They need to stop hiding mm -hmm. because everybody mm -hmm. has something within. And that everybody deserves to be heard. Thank you. 
I just, I'm just like, oh my God, I can't. I just can't. I'm, so, <laughs> I'm so, dumbfounded. And it doesn't matter, just like you said, doesn't matter how good you are if nobody sees you. Mm. You got that right. That was powerful. Thank you. And I think I'm going to quote you on that. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Andrea, did you have something you wanted to share? <clears throat> well, um, I think um, Marcia did a good job for both of us. But anyway, um, thank you, Carmo. I mean, yes. one, I mean, it was just a beautiful exposition on, you know, moving past pain to like mm -hmm. this higher place, which of course mm -hmm. you have to be a rock to not be moved by. Um, and um, Sorry about your sister. Yeah. But good for you for being there. I, I think, well, all of us are a little choked up. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I'm like, God. oh, I'm oh, so glad God. I'm not on camera. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. This anyway, is the pretty yes. version of what was happening earlier. So, <laughs> yeah, right. I was like, wow. Uh, but, you know, I, again, I, I talk to people all the time about, like, you know, we can either be pushed. By pain or pulled by a vision mm -hmm. and i love that your one of your actual call to action yeah that was a call to action i'll go get my free thing right but your actual call to action was a soul call to action and don't let something bad happen to you in order for you to actually live the life you really want to live which a hundred percent resonates with what we talk about here at mean life motivation like that is if that's not the the story <laughs> the story of what we talk about i don't know what it is and so and so when you were sharing that, it, 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 I think it touched me so and triggered the, um, the biological response of like, sweat through your eyeballs. Um, because, <laughs> that is, because that is, you know, the same story and the same reason why I've created this, this system and these platforms and all of these things. And so to one, I, you know, I went on this journey this year to try to, to create an army of people who really want people to be their best and really want people to change the world, right? It's like, oh, oh change the world, <laughs> right? And, and so I'm so, I'm so e e emotionally connected to that cause. And for you to say those words from your own perspective, that will resonate exactly with what yeah. I was, what, I, what I'm after and what I'm trying to do in this world. It just, it was really kind of moving for me. It was like, I saw myself in you. I like I'm like yes let's let's do this Carmel let's let's tell them all we got this let's do yes. our message right like it just made me want to that much more like I'm already excited to you know be sharing platforms with you anyway but it just made me me that much more connected to you so you a soul sister now baby you ain't getting me. I, <laughs> <That's it. we're laughs> <done. laughs> thank, thank, thank you for holding space oh me. god I really appreciate it no no there was no face to hold it yeah. was just an embrace to give yeah. uh you you really you you own that space that you are in and we are just here to embrace you in it yeah. so i uh i'm Thank I'm you. supposed to do a job here of moving this along and I'm having a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, one last thing, Monica, and I think, and, and that's why I say thank you so much for holding space. We tend to negate the things that have happened to us. Yeah. We go, oh yeah, that, it just happened, get over it. Because we're survivors, you know, we're yeah. drivers and survivors. So quite often I don't tell that story or I tell it in a, yeah, 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 look, this happened. Matter of fact. But it was, yeah, but it was so intense. Um, so yeah, it is amazing. Thank you. Yeah. So for those of you who are watching this, I'm sorry your your Monday just turned into a tearful, soulful Monday. Uh, but we are going. I'm going to do my best to try to move this along, uh, and you know, compose myself. But thank you again uh, for that. So let's keep networking, right? Uh, I have. Uh, this lovely quote to share with you all, which is branding is not just business cards and a website. It's a lifestyle. And I know this group of people uh, believe that as well. And as we talk about those things and we continue to have this connected conversation with these experts, uh, in Mink Life Motivation, we talk about it in form, function, and style, right? Like if, it's, if it doesn't, if it's not in the right shape, if it doesn't function the way you need it to be, and if it doesn't look good, you shouldn't have it. And so I wanted to kind of like just open the floor for us to talk about that. Like what, 
you know, uh, I'll, I'll leave, I'll start with Carmel because I think the rest of us are still trying to compose ourselves just a bit. Mm -hmm. But uh, what, what are your thoughts on, on, you know, branding really being a lifestyle, not just a series of random, you know, random items with your logo stuck on it? Yeah, I, I think it, that it is so true and so well put because you do become your brand. And I remember somebody telling me years ago, and I would have said it myself, I'm no good at marketing. It's like, well, what is marketing to you? But marketing to me is everything you do before a sale, every conversation you have, every time you present yourself. Like, you know, even online, you see a lot of people now, and it's okay for certain meetings. We do come up and we're a bit bedraggled looking or whatever. But it's still, you need to present yourself in the public forum exactly how they need to see you. So it's really important how you show up, how you present yourself, and how. And, and becomes, I, I remember learning coaching and doing NLP and, you know, all the language techniques that go with that. And after a while, it's so ingrained in you in practice, you don't even realize you're doing it anymore. Mm. It's like riding a bicycle as well. We have a certain amount of capacity to remember everything. So you're riding a bike and you're going, okay, pedal, steer it, all of this. Now we ride a bike without thinking. So I think when you do anything, um, as a repetition, it eventually does go into your psyche as just being you. Yeah, you, I, you're a hundred percent right, right? So I remember when I first told people that the name of my company is gonna be Mink Anything. And they were like, why would you pick that <laughs> name? That's horrible. And now people are like, oh my gosh, Mink Life, I love what that means, <laughs> right? And so it, 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 it's, it's so, but it's like, that's literally, I've been, I've been talking to people about this concept of motivate, inspire, network knowledge for about six years before Mink Life Motivation completely formed into what it is today. Yeah. And so now it's just so, so a matter of fact. Um, and people are yeah. like, oh, that means so much to me uh, that, that before when they were telling me I was crazy of uh, picking mink, like you don't sell furs. Why are you, why is it named mink, right? Um, I, I claimed mink for myself and I claimed it, you know, like by saying it over and over again and answering the question of what it means or answering the question before they even ask of what it means. And so uh, I think you're absolutely right. It, it really is in every day that you show up, uh, it, it really kind of comes through. Marcia, did you want to add anything to what Karma was saying? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it is a lifestyle because if you're, that is if you're in touch with who you are, your beliefs, what you stand for and everything. Um, unless if you're not in touch, that's because maybe you're thinking of, okay, I should be like such and such, or I should be like such and such and try to adopt everything that they're saying as your own. And then you're like, because let's think when we're children, when we're children, we are taught Oh no, like you might want to say, oh, I want to be a doctor or no, I want to be like an artist or I want to be, you know, I don't know, just whatever, right? Cowboy. You've got family, yeah, cowboy or cowgirl, you know, and then you've got family members that may say, oh no, you need to be something that will make money. You should be a doctor, a lawyer or something like that. And, you know, unfortunately those things, when you get older, you know, you're kind of have those thoughts running in your head. And then when you get older, it's kind of like you've kind of lost a piece of the magic and the wonder from being a child of the dreams, the big dreams that you've had because you've stuffed them down because, okay, I'm thinking I want to make money and that's all it is. You know what I mean? And so as far as lifestyle, it's like being in touch with knowing who you are and what you stand for. And being able to actually go after that and live it, to live mm -hmm. it out, you guys. And that, yeah. So that yeah, is, yeah, I mean, that's one of the reasons why we kind of do all of this mink life stuff. We always say, start with the life calibrator. <laughs> start yeah. with the life calibrator. No, it's true. And no one wants to do the life calibrator first. They're like, no, I need to fix my business. And it's like, nah, bruh, you need to fix your life. And then your life will fix your business. I promise you. No, it's and true. <laughs> And the reason why the reason why we do that is because 
if your brand is not attached to who you are, if you're creating something, even if you are a multi-level marketer or you are, a, mm -hmm. um, uh, or you are in some other organization and you don't 100% embody what it is you're trying to sell other people, they see the inauthenticity. Absolutely. Absolutely. They spot it from a mile away and then they say you're a slimy salesperson or, uh, or they're not excited because you're not excited, right? No. And so when I was rebranding right now I was going through Marcia's kind of rigor moro of like pulling my brand together and she was asking me questions and we were trying to figure out what that was going to look like I was like well you know I want to be an international businesswoman like when I was when I when I, I wanted to be when I was seven and she was able to bring that playfulness into all of my brand materials and the art and and all of those things and like who who are you Monica who do you really want the world to see and I was like I want I'm I'm professional, but I'm also quirky as hell, <laughs> and I'm fun, <laughs> and I'm not serious. I can't be serious a day in my life, and if I don't do a shoulder shimmy in a, <laughs> in, in a meeting, I'm not living my best life, right? And so she, and, and then from there, then she was able to really help me kind of craft my brand materials so that they felt that way, right? They looked that way. They kind of became that, but it all, she's right. It all started with that, like, do you know yourself? first because if I try when I really started this I tried to be the serious business person I want people to take me serious and it never worked <laughs> <laughs> it didn't I'm shocked it didn't <laughs> no, you know why it didn't work because I didn't show up and all my quirks were hidden oh. right so I'm like showing up and I'm like trying to be pulled together and I'm trying oh. to use the big words and I you know and they weren't connecting to me because mm. I was not there and so uh, it never it never worked that way because I was too busy trying to be the serious business person. So how you guys were talking about it definitely is a lifestyle. <laughs> Living proof oh, no. here. The minute oh, no. I started rocking out with my shoulder shimmy, I'm like, we're going to have some fun in business. Then that's when all of it started kind of really t being taken to the next level. And people are like, oh, now I want to work with you. We go have a good time. Let's do it. You know, and so uh -huh. it really changed things. But Andrea, what do you what are you, what are your thoughts about? Uh, it's not just a website and a lifestyle, a, a website and business cards, but it's a lifestyle. I am. Um, well, I agree with everything everyone said. And I, and I guess to add, I hate being last. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I always pull up the rear and I've got to find oh. one more thing. <laughs> right. I'm like, so, but I, I, I was thinking of Carmel's story and this whole conversation and I know each of the rest of you and I think though I'll add the feeling part oh here we go <laughs> so when people are, are attracted to you or your brand or your story or something that they see themselves like the mirrors up and they go that person will get me if I share this little piece of me or something like that and I was thinking I have met Carmel in the um by way of a story and a metaphor. So she's in the conference and Carmel was like, woo! And I was like, wow, she's so <laughs> full of energy. And I was very attracted to your energy. And um, then I was attracted to her follow-up on LinkedIn. <laughs> and then I was like, I'm in the story and I'm off mic and I'm like, God, oh, she's such a mensch. I love her now. Like, you know what I mean? Like all of those things layered together um, to just make me go, Oh, right. I'm supposed to be on her calendar. Let me hurry up. Where was that LinkedIn thing? Like, <laughs> and I, I say that by way of illustration and examination is that all the touches, so there were various touches, right? And each of them was engaging or gives a piece of you or shares a part of you. And then there's a story or a meeting and a connection point. And so, yes, you do live your brand, especially as business people. I think you're absolutely right, Monica, that, um, your truths need to come out and need to be on display so people see that about you. Mm -hmm. And you, as uh, someone said, you attract your tribe. Of course you attract your tribe. And there are plenty of tribes out there to attract. And so, yeah, be yourself, show up in your bestness. <laughs> That's my new word today. <laughs> you know, in your excellence. And of course, everything will follow. And I think, mm -hmm. especially now in this virtual real life, that is so so necessary because we so want to connect we yeah. so want to know that we're in good hands or someone will hold our space like you said carmel or hold our emotions and bring us through some kind of transformation so yeah yes leading from that heart space gets 
we all need it so much more now. So mm -hmm. of course, anyone who's in touch with that and can demonstrate it through their materials, their conversation, their story, um, it's not a matter of winning, just connects. Connects and connects in a winning way. I like that better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not about yeah. I don't know how many times I've been reached out to on LinkedIn, right? Uh, and it was so generic and it was yeah. so blase. And I was, is this a bot or a person? And the ones who always make it through are the ones first who follow my calendar link. Cause I'm like, is this a real person? Let me put my calendar link in to make sure that it's actually a real person. They'll respond differently if it's calendar link than if you respond with words. Um, but then the other thing was once I had connected with that person, right? Um, and I had seen it, like we always talk about our, our whole thing is a funnel, right? You have the influence where you're connecting with people. You have the actual branding materials that kind of support what you thought when you met them. Then you have the business practices of how they do their business. Does that line up with those other things and how they showed, they showed up previous to that? And then it's the person, right? And, and at this point, I've experienced all four layers of karma. And I have okay. to say that they are all in alignment. Those mm. four contact points in dealing with you have been like exactly that you showed up as your authentic self all the way through those points and i can't mm. i can't illustrate that better for anyone to, to know that all of those things have to be in alignment for now i'm like you are a go-to person right now it's like okay karma we need your help with this. <laughs> we need your help with this messaging right and i know exactly who i'm gonna go to and so all that noise of the people who are hitting me up on linkedin and all that noise of all the people who are posting on Instagram and, you know, that I see all the time, what pierces through all of that is the direct connection of how you aligned all of those pieces yeah. of connection points with me mm. to like, no, Carmel's my girl. I got you. And not only that, but now Carmel's my girl to everybody else that I talk to. Right. Cause that is, that's the next level, right? It's not just, will yeah. I buy from you, but will I share my man, my kid, and my purse? That's my trust factor, right? If I can trust you with my man, my kid, and my purse, then I can trust you with my network right? Mm. Uh, with my reputation, because mm. that's how I feel my, my network is. I built that on my own integrity, my own mm -hmm. respect level, my, like my blood, sweat, and tears went into those conversations of building this trust. And so if I extend my network to you, right, I must, I must like know and trust you to that same extent. I must be able to trust you with my man, my man, my child, my, and my purse as well. Um, and <laughs> you have done that though. And you've done that so successfully. And I'm going to be honest, like blatantly honest with everybody in the Facebook world. I think I've only known Carmel for like a month, maybe. Oh, yeah. month or wow. six weeks. Six wow. weeks. Six, ah, right. right? Uh, but the first conversation her and I had was like, ooh. I like her. And then how she showed up for me on the conference and, and how she corresponded with everyone and how she followed up and how the breadth of all of the content that she has put out there has been so spot on and perfect. And then now this very, this very instance, I'm telling y'all, y'all just saw the beginnings of a love affair. She's going to be on all my stuff, right? <laughs> because it's so phenomenal, right? And now, now I feel so utterly comfortable with actually sharing her with everyone else. So I, I, I think I say all that to say is when everything lines up and, inc and including the materials that she sent me, right? When she sent me the picture of her, when she sent me her bio, when she sends me emails and how she corresponds with me, those are all con client mm -hmm. touch points, yeah. all of them. Yep. And so, and she did such a great job. So I'm just saying, if mm -hmm. you want help with the messaging, she's your girl. Yeah. <laughs> she's done such a great yeah. job of it. I, yeah. You know, I don't know. I'm saying that out loud on in on the inter, in, on the interweb, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to go on for forever and ever without us. Uh, that I think you are an amazing person. I'm so excited mm -hmm. for you to be a part of our community. And I'm, I, I'm trying to not keep crying, so I don't. And I'm not even one of those touchy feely cries. No, she's so. not. So yeah, yeah you know you really all. like to get not. all of us like yeah. We're yeah. all ugly in our meek life live today. <laughs> Carmel, uh, can you do me a favor? Can you put the link to your uh, thing in the chat so I can send it to our um, people who want to put it in the comments? Oh, she already has off? it in. Oh, does she, she have it? That. Okay, because okay, I've, I've been I've been getting messages. I'll put it in again. There we go. Absolutely. So uh, now it's time for our hot seat. And uh, basically it's us on the hot seat answering questions from you. This one's coming from Jonathan in Salt Lake, Utah. Uh, and it's, I am struggling with business cards. 
right? Because we're in a virtual world. I want to connect with people in these virtual events, but I am not sure how to stand out. So ladies, what do you do? Share your one tip on how you stand out in the crowd <laughs> right now with your brand materials. Oh, am I going first again? I feel you like Andrew go should first. go first. <laughs> <laughs> I feel yeah. like you go first and you can share all your wisdom. Um, um, well, no, you go first, you're the guest. <laughs> for me standing out is, is like being authentic is one of my things is standing out about that but I think again it comes back to the message knowing who the audience are in that and really coming out with a message that is congruent to you yeah. congruent to your business and that they can go oh that person that that's what I want so really listening in those environments and come on out, like bring your quirky out. I love that you say that you bring your quirky out, Monica. And I'm the same, I've got to, I bring the, I know. even my, prof, my profile picture on Facebook is like, me like this. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and it is bringing that for me. And I know it very well in Australia, I have an Irish accent. So I stand out just that little bit more. So I'll use that as well. So use whatever it is that's unique about you. I quite often say to my clients, if you cook caramel open, you'll never find caramel in here. You'll find blood and guts and heart and lungs and whatever, but you'll never find caramel in here. So we all have something really unique and special about ourselves. Aww. So find what that is and share it in that environment and people, the right people will be magnetized to you. Absolutely. Andrea, since you're always going last. So yeah. <laughs> well, um, I, one, Karma, those were all great tips. And actually, you know, Jonathan, uh, the business card thing, I actually would like a cute version. I, I wanted you two people to talk about this, you know, a cute virtual business card. I've looked through lots of different ones. You know, we're all needing to leave our information in a chat. So mine is kind of boring because I haven't found the thing I love the most that I think is emblematic of me. But I mean, just making sure that your little packaging of what you're going to say in all of these virtual chats doesn't hog up the chat. And also, you know, you format it so that you know what it's gonna look like when you put it in. I mean, because we all have been in chats and someone puts in something, it's like a page and you're like, oh my gosh, they're hogging the chat. I don't know, it's like a weird <laughs> thing to be weird about now, but that is what we're getting weird about. And so I, I love that we can, um, so I format it mine a certain way so that it's like specific, it's condensed and hopefully engaging. I wish we could put pictures, but we can't. So now we have to just have links. And so I know that there are platforms out there. I just haven't found one that I like tremendously. I was like, Carmel, what did you do? <laughs> but I, I also think the other thing too is working the chats. Like I think I've really realized um, don't sit back, actually engage in those chats and actually start having the conversations at the appropriate times. If you can, I mean, if someone's talking, don't be blabbing with 5,000 people, but you know, I mean, it, have a nice conversation like you would at a normal um, in real life event. So I, those two things are my tips. It's like one, reach out, notice, you know, reach out and then maybe do find them in LinkedIn and ping them while you're there saying nice meeting you on the call. I've loved all of those little touches that I have adopted when people have done those with me so that they know I met them there. I identify where they did. Just like you said, I don't cold call in LinkedIn. I only like, I respond to the ones where people say nice meeting you at this event. Just wanted to give you my contact information. Let's connect here and schedule a chat and they put a link or vice versa. So those are all nice touches. I think that many of us who network a lot really like. So don't hog the chat with a big old unformatted <laughs> everything about you. Um, but make it cute. Like I have a little quote, a link and like all the little name, phone number, all that, but it doesn't, you know, look yeah, composing. I'm always embarrassed if it goes in wrong. So I've actually formatted them, put them in a memo and have them ready to slap into chats <laughs> on the ready. So that's my little tip. Cause I'm the least Martia? artistic here. <laughs> So I would say I use my I use my little arsenal of my little arsenal of tools. Um, so I use I think about my MBTI personality. I think about my fascination advantage. I think about my high five, my Enneagram. I make sure all of those are aligned 
you know, because I've taken assessments, you know, of like understanding more about myself and, and just using those tools to help me understand more and to make sure that I'm actually communicating it through my brand strategy. So it's like all those things. And then, then as far as, as far as like a business card goes, you know, because hello, I used to have paper business cards. I don't use those as, as much anymore, obviously. So now I'm in the process of using a page. I've de I'm designing a page on my website instead of having like all of these like links and things like that. A page on my website that will be designed specifically like my website. It'll look just like it. And I'm going to use a bit.ly link. Not, I'm not using a long, you know, a long, you know, web URL address. So the bit.ly link will be like really short, you know, so if you don't know, it's bit, B-I-T dot L-Y, and then you can, you can shorten your, your long web page link or whatever. So that's what I'm, I'm doing, you know, so that, that way my stuff will look like, like my stuff, <laughs> you know what As I mean? As I like. said, I'm not the most gifted artistically. She's like, oh, I've created this cute little page. <laughs> it's going to be a bitly. <laughs> Jonathan, that's hi-fi, and we all want that. But there is the lo-fi way that I just described. So, oh, my, okay. my <laughs> so my one tip is actually skip the fancy business card altogether. Mm -hmm. What has worked that I did in person that I don't look like, again, people used to try to hand me their business card. And I'm like, if you want to go to the business graveyard, the business card graveyard, which is the shoe box in my office, <laughs> give it to me. I'll add to it. Right. But because that's what happens, right? We all have great intentions of like going yeah. in and prefer like going back. But like, to be honest, at the end of a networking event, your shoes hurt and you just want to like not be in the clothes you're in. And, you know, you want to finally be cozy and you're in your, your comfy. Uh, and so I stopped a long time ago giving um, a business card. But in these chats, like Andrea said, I work the chats, right? So I'm engaging with the people who are speaking. Oh my gosh, that's such a great tip. That's amazing, right? I'm coming from a place of contribution. My asks are never about buy my anything. Mm -hmm. They're always about like, what do you need? How can I help? How can I serve? And I just directly at someone, right? So I'll be like, hey, Carmel, you sound amazing. I heard your commercial. It's amazing. Let's connect. Here's my calendar link. I skip the website altogether. Mm. Altogether. I skip the website. Why? Because I want to talk to this person. <laughs> I want them to actually know who I am. And once they can talk to me, then we can talk about, then I, as an introvert, we, we have this little trick. I'm going to give some introvert tricks away. We actually do none of the talking. We don't sell you anything. We listen we hear all of what your business is about. And as you're listening, we're like, oh, okay. Oh, you fit in what part of my life? Are you just a friend? Are you a business acquaintance? Are you, do you need a product I have? Do you need someone else that I, that I have, right? And so we are like taking this assessment as we're talking to people. And then you, I provide a specific call to action to her in the actual meeting itself that actually has everything to do with what's her goals for her life and business, right? So as she's like, I really just wanna get my message out there. And I liked her, I was like, hey, I have a conference now. Could I have been like, oh, and I have this class and I have this, <laughs> and I have this licensing program and I have this affiliate program. Yes, I could have done all those things and I could have did all that in the chat, but the likelihood of her wanting to step into my world and get to know who I am and what we do was a lot lower than if I'm like, oh my God, I'm so interested in you. You sound amazing. Here's my calendar link. I'm going to put you directly on my calendar so we can connect. And I skip all the other stuff. At some point when they're getting ready to do that meeting, they'll go check out your website. So you add that to your calendar link, right? You add that in the body. Hey, in the meantime, while we're waiting for our meeting, here's my website, right? You hear them out in the conversation and you say, well, I have all these other products, but this is, this seems like this would be a good fit or here's what we can strategize together. I'm always looking at how I can improve what it is that they're doing so that we can get to the next level. And after that, then it's substantially easier to give them to give me money, right? But I had to do all of that stuff first and come from a place of contribution first before even doing that. And none of that requires a business card. So moral of the story. Ditch the business card. 
start following the ABCs. Always be connecting. Always mm-hmm. be con- contributing to what is happening there, right? And that is how you stand out. You don't stand out by like a look at me. You stand out by like, who are you? Right? Mm-hmm. Who are you? And if you can do that, it'll be brilliant. So we are at the end of the show, guys. We have three minutes and it's time to wrap up. I don't know about you, but er this has been by far the most emotional show (laughs) we have ever had. And before I move on to uh, our announcements, I wanted to let everybody know, if you are out there and you have questions about your life, right? Your personal life, your business, your branding, or your networking. We would like to spend some time helping you work through those things. So feel free to either hang out in our in our Facebook group, uh, which is Entrepreneurs Living Healthy, Wealthy, and Fulfilled, or go to Mink Life Motivation forward slash live and submit a question, and we will be happy to answer it for you right here on the show. So it's time for the announcements. Uh, what's happening in y'all's world? How can people connect with you? And what should they be following you on? Let's start with Andrea this time. Hey, you said you didn't want to laugh. No, I know. Okay, so I know, I know. I'm obviously, it's Monday. Okay, so what's happening in my world? Well, I am gearing up for all the people who feel like they're going to overdo it for Thanksgiving giving and Christmas um, and working on campaigns for people who health wise when I'm uh, <laughs> no you're not you're not gonna you don't, you don't even know how to do that anymore you're not gonna overdo it because you went through the cleanse <laughs> you don't know how to go overboard anymore so I have a cleanse mm-hmm. and I'm working on the marketing to help people and you know we should be doing these kind of things all the time but after the holidays of course the classes start and I'm working on um, the materials for that. And of course, in the interim for people who are like, I wanna just get ahead of the game, um, you're always welcome to reach out to me at Wellbeing and Worth and we can get you in that mind, body, spirit space um, with a coaching call. And we can just talk about, you know, what it is that you hope to achieve in all three of the, that 360 realm for your life. And so I will put that actually in the chat for change the little link to my calendar to get in there and, um, so we can make mirth, make happy and be happy and well through the holidays. So that's what I'm doing. Yeah. I think that's great that you're giving them the opportunity to talk to you. I just feel mm-hmm. like people want to connect more with a person these days because mm-hmm. we don't have real people. So mm-hmm. we don't have like actual face-to-face as much. So, so that's great. Uh, and um, my whole family is already set up for being on the next round of cleanse because mm-hmm uh yeah we had the whole conversation we were like yeah now it's time to detox from sugar and we were like let's wait until after the holidays so we're gonna be on that cleanse i hope y'all join me in uh and my husband and my daughter in that because <laughs> we already know if bad things are about to happen my daughter yeah, yeah bad things are about to happen okay marcia <laughs> what's happening in your so, world so i have the uncover free brand assessment that I've told people about before. And you can get that from bit.ly forward slash assess my brand. And the A is uppercase, the M is uppercase and the B is uppercase. And if you want, you can, I can put my acuity scheduling link into the, the chat, the comments rather, I will put them there because you're trying to, she's been trying to get me to do this. And I did this and you guys, I did not set any parameters for my, (laughs) that's why I don't talk about doing, I don't talk about doing like people scheduling because everybody and their mother scheduled on like only two days. But it it proves So, But now I know, (laughs) I know I have to now do that, but I'm still doing my website still with the page with all my links now. You should. And then you can do it for me and Monica next. Listen. Winning. You know, we love to share. Sharing is caring. <laughs> Her was like, oh, what a bunch of crazies. I, swear. I know it's like, like it's, is it, has it been the happiest hour of your day? Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah, so tell exactly. us, uh, be, be, besides this lovely 
webinar that you have coming up? Is there anything else that we can follow you on mm -hmm. or do or like how can we stay sure. in the world? Oh, look, you can always contact me at thecommunicationqueen.com.au. I do set parameters, Marcia, very important. I know, <laughs> I made that mistake. I will never do that again. Let me tell you, yeah. I will never do uh, it again. <laughs> yeah, and I think this time of year is very much about planning. So I'm setting up the whole year next year and helping, my, we have a membership and we're helping those guys do it. You know, really wrapping up this year, I'm finishing off a, a masterclass at the moment, which goes into December. So really focusing on helping people plan and build what next year looks like, because I'm a big advocate for, let me look at your 12 months when we get to this time of the year, put in all your public holidays, put in all your stuff, get it planned and the workshop. So we, um, on my website, you'll see there are video workshops there already, how to get your message across with video without ever having to be in front of the camera. Okay. So they're already there. Yeah, I know. Um, they're right. already there and ready to go. Um, but we're planning some big stuff for uh, 2021. Mm. Yes. Yay. If this, is, if this is any indication <laughs> of all the stuff for 2021, I'm in. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It's very exciting. One, one of the, just to finish up, one of the last things that I studied as well is a thing called psychosomatic therapy. Okay. And, and an offshoot of that is there's a face read and one of the things I do is show me your face and I'll tell you what's going on in your business oh so, yeah I get a lot of bookings for that because what you said earlier Monica is so true let me fix your life because <laughs> how you play the game of life is actually how you play no, the game true. of business it's true and it's actually written all over your face if you know how to read yeah. it absolutely yeah. all right so mm. Here's what's happening in the Mean Flag universe. So Business Maximizer courses are going down this week and I'm super excited. In the Business Maximizer, we cover the six key factors to your business. So leadership, business processes, um, customer, customer recommendations, human resources, products and services, and your market blueprint. Uh, if you haven't gotten yourself worked out with an action plan in all six of these areas, now is the time. The new year is coming and you got to be ready to go to catch all of these leads that we just kind of helped you outline, right? So uh, what happens in the Business Maximizer? You're going to create habits that support your personal and business growth. You are going to build strong, mutually, um, mutually beneficial relationships, both in life and in business. You are going to create a strategy that supports your life and business optimization. Not to mention a balanced and organized time management system so you don't end up overbooking yourself like Marcia. Uh, <laughs> and you are going to align your actions to your vision to maximize those resources. Um, and best of all, you'll know exactly how you will know how you will need help moving forward to get your business to the next level. Uh, one of the things that's coming back by popular demand, I thought I was going to get away with doing one of these. I was not allowed to do get away with that because we had such a good time. Uh, we were meeting with uh, other people who were in the Mink Life Motivation community, people like Carmel and uh, Marcia and Andrea, and there's many more uh, who are not here with us um, on, a, on a weekly basis. Uh, uh, we were able to learn about how you can grow with Mink Life Motivation. So like, what are some ways that we can support you? And the last piece is you can give a commercial what's happening in your business and also ask for support and help from the others who are in the group. It was a phenomenal time, which means backed by popular demand. They're requiring me to do this every week. And I say they, I mean the popular demand. They were like, so we're doing these masterminds on a regular basis. Yes, we are. So we're going to do Wednesday, November 24th, the day before American Thanksgiving uh, for, at 6 p.m. Yes, I will probably uh, be taking a break from my preparations of getting my Thanksgiving dinner together uh, in order to have this. But uh, those of you who are not American, please feel free to join us as you are not celebrating Thanksgiving and you have nothing better to do but to hang out with us. Uh, and so that is happening this Wednesday coming up. Not to mention, it's not too late. 
you can check out Carmel's performance as well as all of the other speakers um, right now on the next global virtual conference. Uh, it, your seven day pass is $99. There are 24 panel discussions, 24 breakout sections, six workshops, two downloadable action planners, $10,000 worth of special offers and gifts. And guess what? When you go there, you're gonna be asked who sent you. And because Carmel was on with us today, she gets the credit. So you're gonna say, Carmel sent me, it was her. <laughs> and she will get, you know, special perks and love. So with that, I am so happy to have next week be on. Uh, we are gonna be talking about presentation. And the last piece is I wanna thank all of you for being here today. I wanna thank my, this is my favorite flat slide every time. Uh, so I wanna thank Alana who always has us really Woo! kind of locked and loaded in order to do this program, not to mention my guest, uh, my guest or co-host, I should say, uh, and okay. Carmel for coming on in this wee hour of the morning. Uh, I also want to thank Marcia for being a part of my brand team um, yeah. and Peggy Warney for doing all of the promotional shots for this. I am Monica Henderson and I am reminding you to, you have the power to activate the vision within. And if you didn't hear something that motivated you to do that today, you must be crazy. Okay, so activate that vision. Uh, take her advice, but remember, sharing is caring. If you enjoyed this, right, share it with someone else who you think will enjoy it. If you feel like they would get a benefit from it, if you know a business owner or a, a professional who needs some motivation, please share this show with them. Hit that share button and just kind of send it on over. You can even do it in a, in a private message, but whatever you do, share the message because it's so important for us all to be in this together. And with that, I want to say goodbye. It's been fabulous. We love you. Have a good weekend. See you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>